Do our voices sound good? How do we sound in these microphones? What does this microphone sound like? I think it's going to sound good. The microphone sounds good. Well, you're not even, you're not fucking even in that talking microphone. to it. Hi, microphone. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I saw that. That was big in the microphone there. It was b- <laughs> Nick's big in the microphone. Nick's, to be, Nick's big I, in the I microphone trying to be game. big in, in, in my, you know. Yeah. It would sound better if we got a baboo. No requests. <laughs> I've never been able to do a baboo, and it's like a, a source of shame for me. Have you even tried? Oh, yeah. I mean, I used to try on the old podcast. Like, in, you know, no, uh-uh. Oh, let's hear it. No. Chris, this is episode 299. This is your last chance <laughs> to do not, a baboo. Why is that true? Uh, did you not hear me just now? <laughs> <laughs> it's your last chance to do a baboo. I'm not doing it. Please? I can't, I, for I, me? Okay. Chris, you, I've sat next to you for If you guys do it to remind me what it actually sounds like, I will try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You son of a bitch. That's what a boo boo sounds like. Okay. I don't know. It's January 26th, 2017. This is Idle Thumbs 299. I'm Chris Remo. I'm Nick Brecken. I'm Jake Rodkin. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Here hey. we are. Welcome back to in this. the studio. Yep, we did it. We did it. We did do it this week earlier, <laughs> and now we're doing it again, sort of. We're re-recording part of this episode because we did a bad job, we think. So if you watched it on Twitch, welcome to the new content. Yeah. Welcome fans, to Bizarro Fans 299. were dissatisfied. <laughs> uh, they found that the, 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 the resolution uh, of the opening of Idle Thumbs <laughs> right. 299 was dissatisfactory. Yeah. So after a massive write-in campaign over the last two days, mm-hmm. we've decided to come back into the studio and give people a far more pleasing conclusion. You know what's weird about well, this? To, to really. the first half of Idle <laughs> right. Thumbs yeah, 299. Well, yeah. to the first, like, fourth Really, the first half <laughs> ends the same, will end the same way. None of this means anything, although what's weird, actually, is that this has never happened before. I mean, it's been the case in the past, especially early in the podcast run, that we would re- just redo segments or we'd redo entire episodes, not all the time, but more more than never. I would say a little under a dozen, probably, of the first, of the first, of 50, the first 50 had, like, yeah, spot yeah. re-records or, like, retaking it halfway through the session in the studio or whatever. But, th- but those were never, of like... Those just went in a hole and died. Whereas our failed attempt at the opening of this podcast is live on is just archived on Twitch forever. So our mistakes are just in the world now. Yeah, it's weird. yeah, it's weird too to bad. About. Um, speaking of our mistakes being in the world, actually, so uh, you <laughs> may. <laughs> it's like you, a kid that we had. We just can't kill. Yeah. Just out there. Yep. Well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> Interesting comparison, Nick. Or a baby, if you will. Anyway, continue. That's not better. <laughs> that's not better. Or like a cute animal. Yeah. That's yes. It's weird that you guys are like on the same page. About <laughs> no, this. no, of course. That's... I was trying to see if I could come up with one that was worse, but also better, but not really any better. Notably, better in real life, worse in a movie. <laughs> right. People, yeah, yeah, you're unforgivable get, if you kill a dog. Yes, people yes. getting killed in a movie, not good, but we can like accept it, even if it's terrible. Animal getting intentionally killed in a movie unforgivable the, always that's a terrible person who does it yeah i guess the terrible person kills a baby as well but like maybe it's like rosemary's baby but when they kill a baby it's like edgy it's not it's like it's, <laughs> it's personal and there's like usually a reason for it. Right. like people kill an animal in a movie like that is just coded to mean they are evil and do this right. thing for no yes. reason yeah, whereas yeah. you always kill a person to move the plot forward mm-hmm. i mean you kill an animal to move right the plot forward or because too, so. satan came out of you yeah yeah. That's true, but like it's justified, I right. would say. Yeah, or it like reveals something about your character. That's I guess like, she doesn't kill. Interesting. Baby. Yeah, it's yeah. just so so simple to kill an animal, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> this is the second time in the history of Idle Thumbs you freaked me out by looking at me and saying something about an animal. Was it the one that spiders thing? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> and in, Nick was not present for this, but in an ancient GDC episode. Jake declared that he sometimes sees spiders where there are none <laughs> and then sort of just stared at me laughing. And I was actually kind of freaked out. Uh, anyway. Uh, that clip <laughs> may be heard next week. Oh, that's true. Jake is doing a special There's a little thing collage. for the oh, 300th yeah. anniversary. Yeah. Or the 300th anniversary. <laughs> our third millennium. Speaking of demon babies, <laughs> join us for our 300th year of Idle Thumbs. <laughs> Our undying attempt to podcast to you. So you were trying to get eternity. to something important. I was trying to get to something important. Um, <laughs> and then we failed. Welcome to Idle Thumbs. Yeah. So last week at the end of the podcast, we mentioned that the, the focus of the show is uh, kind of changing. And 
um, not going to really center explicitly around video games uh, in in the way that it has for you know some would claim has for the uh, the entirety of its run so far, and p- we got a bunch of different responses about that. I mean, uh, honestly, the majority of the responses we got were quite encouraging, which I was was really gratifying and relieving. Um, other people were more upset. Other people were sort of ambivalent. Um, you, there were really every reaction you could imagine come in, which is not a, not a surprise. Um, but I was happy to see that a lot of people were willing to at least um, give us the benefit of the doubt. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because we discovered as we recorded this week's podcast that we probably need the benefit of the doubt a little bit <laughs> because we don't really quite know what we're doing. It actually f- kind of does feel to me how it felt when we first started doing this podcast. But when we really get going this time, look out, Serial. Look yeah. out, <laughs> Gimlet Media. Yeah. We're yeah. coming for you. Idlethumbs.net. Yeah. So, you know, I'm just bringing this up to say that if we have off episodes, I mean, you know, we've always had off episodes, but um, if we have off episodes now, it's, it is definitely because we are trying to figure out what sort of cohesive core we find to uh, build this podcast around. I, I was considering going into some of the reasons for, at least from my perspective, why we're making this change. But I don't know if you, I don't know if you guys think that's even valuable. I don't know if it's invaluable. <laughs> Classic flammable, inflammable <laughs> wow. situation. This is wow. like some kind of paradox. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know if it's inflammable. Yeah. It's, it's lit. Oh my god. Ooh. Anyway, as we were saying, yeah, as uh, we were saying. <laughs> benefit of the doubt, etc. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you know what? I will. I will say so. And I we have a timer now, so I'm going to limit it to 30 seconds. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Um, so for for me, one of the things that has happened over the course of doing Idle Thumbs is I have really, really, really loved developing rapport with you guys and with the other hosts who have who have sort of been part of the podcast over the years. Um, and I have found that in my life generally these days it has gotten increasingly difficult for me to structure my life such that I can play enough video games to reliably have stuff to talk about on the podcast, which means I end up feeling either guilty about not playing enough or stressed about trying to play enough to have enough to talk about on the podcast. And it actually has worsened my relationship with video games in a way that... You mean your relationship with me, Jake Rodkin. With, <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's right. exactly. Um, my hope is that if we can find a way to make this podcast a sort of fun and engaging thing that still has a point, um, which remains to be seen, um, I think my life will feel healthier and uh, and more manageable. Um, that's me. Yep. So. Um, and, you know, my existence on this podcast has been predicated on Chris being interested in playing video games because uh, generally what I do is just talk about the games Chris is playing, which is totally garbage. So, um, you know, I'm still here doing what I do, which is just talking about whatever Chris talks about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> mm, just saying, yeah. Chris, just telling it like it is. Yeah. No, I mean, that's not true. Um, I mean, it's partly true. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say something far more meaningful two or three episodes from now when I've actually had a chance to think about sure. what I mean to say. I'm, yeah. I'm bad at that saying that quickly. I'm sorry. It's fine. In in related news, um, we're recording this episode for a second time, partly for that reason. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's that. You know, if um, if as we get through this, you guys want to uh, do uh, to us uh, on your podcast feed what you would do to a kid you can't get rid of, that's understandable. <laughs> but we hope that you'll stick around. Not to an animal, though. No, definitely. No, then you'd be no. evil. Yeah. Um, in terms of, of, uh, I guess to, to continue the theme of like, how are we feeling this week? Um, to, to, to bridge into something else. I, the other day I was going home from work and, uh, I was walking to the train station to get on the Metro to go home and it was raining and it was shitty and it was late and cold. And I felt bad in part because I had Twitter open and, um, this but is, then Twitter, this is, <laughs> Twitter reminded you that it sometimes contains good things. It does. I mean, among the terrible things, I was honestly feeling really, really bummed. Um, and I, I learned then, uh, totally by surprise, I had absolutely no idea this was coming, that the third uh, mashup album by Neil Ciceriega 
I hope that's how you pronounce his name, was released. And I immediately started streaming it from data to my phone. It is called Mouth Moods. Yeah. And you might have seen the internet freaking out about it this week. Yeah, Mouth Moods is the third album in a series of, of these by Neil Cicirega. Um, the previous one, the first one was called Mouth Sounds. The second one is called Mouth Silence. Uh, and now we have Mouth Moods. I, I think that the easiest way to describe these actually is just as a comedy mashup remix album. Like their primary purpose, I think, um, at their like most simple level is just to be funny. The first album, Mouth Sounds. I think to be surprising even more fundamentally than that. Yeah, you're yeah, you're supposed to be just surprised and amused by them. The 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 first album, it's it almost has a sort of unspoken thesis that all Star by Smash Mouth is the Rosetta Stone of <laughs> pop of pop music. Yeah. Uh, and it and it conveys yeah. this by about every other track. Um you're hearing just some other familiar song that you know from the 20th century, and then suddenly the lyrics to All Star by Smash Mouth play over the top, and they overlay perfectly with like the chord structure and progression of that song. And then it's or you or it's just the somebody yeah. from the well, beginning. Well, then then it sort of starts folding over itself, and it almost becomes a game in that first album where you're waiting for All Star to drop in over the top, but then it'll like pull a twist and a different Smash Mouth song will play or a callback to something earlier in the album that seemed like just an ephemeral uh, drop uh, of some other piece of remix will show up and secretly become the thing that overlays with that. And it ends up becoming this weird, yeah, journey of surprise over the course of the album. And um, yeah, he's done three of these now. And th this one, I think the production quality and just sort of like listenability of the third one I feel is actually at an all-time high. Like I think it's that's right. Yeah. The, the 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 amount of detail work in this third album is intense. Mm -hmm. Like he seems to find a lot of fascination in just the weird vocal ticks and oh, yeah. weird yeah. like mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, I don't you know just yeah yeah no I mean like the, like the somebody from All Star is like omnipresent in these albums. Um, the the first track of Mouth Moods, which is the new one, is almost entirely constructed. Out of these weird, just isolated, out of like the in between, in between lines. words, and yeah. Like even mouth I, sounds, if you will, the mouth sounds. I mean, I think that I think <laughs> that he actually sort of micro earworms. Yeah. Uh, yes, it's these uh, these albums are fascinating because they're both like sort of hilarious and often, as you say, very listenable, but also kind of brutal assault to the senses yep. uh, in a really interesting way. And uh, you were saying that. Um, the first album sort of takes All Star by Smash Mouth as the Rosetta Stone of pop music. I think what these albums kind of demonstrate is that almost any pop song could be the Rosetta Stone to pop music. But the Rosetta of course, Stone is that what you just said? <laughs> Rosetta Stone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but because Neil Ciceriega is a like weird sort of incepting in on himself a million times internet dork, of course the one he chooses is the Shrek song. Yeah. Uh, so and that had also, I think, it, it had been a popular song to sort of ironically remix into stuff before he did it, and then that, but then this album was just. Well, like, I think that's how he started is by just being part of that weird yeah. internet. And then it turned into thing. a concept album that's also a weird. I don't know. Um, like at least for me personally, as a person who doesn't doesn't listen to or associate with a lot of pop music, um, I mean, I li I listen to it, but it's never like. Popular music has never been a huge part of my identity. Right. Um, I wonder if that is also true of Neil Cicirega. I, I know suspect it is. He, he writes a lot of music. Like, He's he, hyper familiar, but clearly doesn't like tribally identify yes, with it. Yes, because yeah. like I, I've, for me as a person who has like obviously a very different interest set and different talents from him, but has that same disassociation from pop music, even though I like it. These albums I find listenable and almost like reassuring, um, because, <laughs> because it speaks to your like condition. Yeah, your kind identity. of. I mean, like yeah. I can. It, it's like I know there are people who listen to these albums and consider them like a brutal takedown of X, Y, or Z of like Smash Mouth or of the Beatles. You know, whatever. Yeah. Like each because it happens to like collide with a thing that that a particular group or person thinks is awesome or sucks and it's like it's a takedown or it's you know mm -hmm. it's so offensive i can't even i can barely listen to this and i i think that these actually are really more having detached fun with the entirety of pop music or at a more optimistic read are just kind of a celebration of the the both like 
total listenability and total like inane nature of pop right. music. Mm. Yeah, like, with the f- emphasis on the inanity, I would say f- differs from album. Um, it's interesting to hear you say that because I definitely grew up as someone who was hyper like. I mean, so until I got involved in the internet game communities that you're describing in the early 2000s, my entire identity was basically built around music. You were rock music snob man. And still to that, (laughs) well, even, I mean, even like greater than my like sort of rock snob stuff was just my like totality of identity with music, right? Like that was, that had primacy in my self identity. And that was still true years into my online game stuff. I mean, it was really not until I actually got a job in the games industry that that stuff ended up becoming sort oh, yeah. of the bigger I remember, part of my life. I remember when I met you in person for the first time, you had like a shoulder bag, huge ass DJ headphones, <laughs> and you were just sort of like hunched against the wall outside of like an old movie, movie theater, theater in Berkeley, yeah. like looking down at the ground with sort of like low lid, disaffected look. And I was like, oh God, he is some fucking music guy. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> like I imagined that you just had like a stack of 15 vinyls in that bag. Even right. I'm sure you did not. I'm I sure you just not, had like no. your homework. Um, but yeah, I, I, I grew up just and even definitely deepened in my adolescent years, like deep, 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 like self identification with music as a musician. You know, not as active a musician as I used to be, but like I find that stuff really fascinating and weird and interesting. Yep. To to loop back around to how I opened the discussion, aside from any of that, this album, I think even more so than the previous two. Mouth moods. I think mouth sounds is still the best of the three, but this one, I think the most of the three is just sort of pure escapism because to your point, Jake, it is the most purely listenable. It has the least of the kind of brutal assault um, of all three. And it's exactly, it is truly what I needed this week, even more than I could have imagined. I just, it's, it's almost an hour long. It's 56 minutes long. And if you can get into it, you can just sink into this weird, bizarro, fucked up musical world for the better part of an hour, and it will remove you from this plane in a way that is very useful. Yep. Just getting back to it being a sort of context-free, almost like weirdly comforting slash safe listen for a person who doesn't know how to interface with pop music, I actually... um, I was at a conference in Portland uh, last year called XOXO, and Neil Cicirega spoke at it, and I got a chance to talk to him about this a little bit. And the thing that he said uh, is uh, he, th- he thinks that there's a lot of really young people, like little kids to early teens, for whom their only association with a lot of the tracks in the three Mouth albums is those albums themselves. Wow. And what that actually reminds me of is how um, I, and I think a lot of nerd people who had this relationship with pop music growing up relate to Weird Al. Oh, oh man. That is a really interesting Shit. touchstone. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. like, I mean, there were oh, definitely yeah. Weird no, Al songs I had... that I knew before I knew the, the original. Where it's like, you can appreciate the, like, you can get into the, like, m- music of it and still enjoy the fact that it sounds like a pop song, but whatever the lyrics were about irrelevant because it's now just about a right. funny thing that you as a kid can laugh at, but it's still like, God, you know, what's funny. And this is going to be a really controversial opinion. I kind of think the stuff Neil Cisariega does is way better than what Weird Al does. Because what Weird Al basically does is make a sort of sanitized version and sort of takes it out of its Mm -hmm. original element. But the element he puts it in is just like safe white dork zone. Not that Neil Cisariega's stuff is is edgy in any way. It's hard to know if anything. But the fact fact that he's going into a musically challenging zone, at least, at times... Yeah, I, that that is totally true. Like, there's there's a lot for your brain to chew on inside of a mouth album that there is not in a Weird Al album. But I think that the the way that it breaks all of its original pieces, or it doesn't explicitly break them free of their cultural context, but it allows a reading of that album that is that. Like, yeah. I, I mean, at the same time, at the same time as it's about that, it's also about obviously the fact that he's that it is a mashup album, that it's putting sure. multiple mm-hmm. pieces from completely ostensibly disparate parts of music on top of each other. Also, Weird Al's totally fine. He's a totally decent dude. Yeah. I got nothing against Weird Al. Great guy. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Weird Al, or whatever. He doesn't care what I say. He probably loves mouth sounds. I wouldn't be surprised if he did. Yeah. I hope he does. <laughs> well, on that, I think we're going to go back in time to the... Original recording of this podcast. So 2007 or <laughs> 8 or whatever. <laughs> it was 2008. Yeah. God, if only. Um, 
<laughs> Enjoy the rest of this podcast we recorded a couple days ago. We should take a break. Let's take a break. Oh, okay. Unsurprisingly, we have some additional information from Jeffrey Bartman, who says, Hi, Thumbs, I'm an evolutionary and population biologist that specializes in herpetology, the study of reptile and amphibians, and I wanted to clear things up for you about whether bats are birds or not. <laughs> Evolution, and also some things about dinosaurs in general. First of all, not surprisingly, bats are not birds. They are mammals. The evolutionary explanation that explains why birds can fly and bats can fly is what is known as convergent evolution. Two completely separate lineages of life evolving a similar trait to tackle a common problem. Birds are dinosaurs, which also means they are reptiles. Pterosaurs or pterodactyls are reptiles, but not dinosaurs. Mm. Look at that. Huh. Okay. This is some like Pluto isn't a planet shit. Yeah. Pterodactyls are not dinosaurs. All of these groups belong to the lineage of reptiles known as archosaurs. Crocodiles are a member of the group and therefore are the closest living relatives of birds. Weird. Yeah. The Archaeopteryx that Nix mentioned is a theropod and is thus cons- and is also considered the first known species of bird. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> On a more exciting note, biologists and paleontologists now believe most theropods were actually covered in feathers and that they use them to stay warm, like how mammals use fur. Yeah. These feathers are thought to be one of the first steps in birds becoming endothermic and that maybe some theropods were endothermic. It just so happened to be that feathers can also be useful for flying around, and theropods that evolved to have lots of feathers soon found themselves flying around. Insects are thought to have developed flight in a similar fashion, but I won't go into that. I think it's a shame that Jurassic World didn't design awesome-looking dinosaurs covered in beautifully colored feathers, but that's just my opinion. Keep casting great pods, feral pug. There are a lot of people who are real defenders of non-feathered dinosaurs in movies, yeah. especially in Jurassic Park. Where do you fall on that? You're saying that as though you... Oh, I think just... I think that the only reason... Well, not the only reason. Identity politics and <laughs> brand af- affinity <laughs> and other bullshit is one reason, and nostalgia and whatever else, but I think the actual reason that people... Uh, don't want that is because they haven't seen it done well. I think that's the actual thing. I think mm. no one has mm. gone through the amount of production design work and directorial and narrative work to make a sick feathered dinosaur seem cool and appealing on screen the way that like Spielberg did with scaly, rubbery dinosaurs. That's true, although... And Jurassic World is not the solution for that. That's not no, the... No, well, sure. But, but, I mean, Spielberg was doing that on the back of decades of, yeah, yeah, of dinosaur course. toys that look like reptiles. Of course. But, like, yeah. I, just, I don't think anyone has actually, like, done the good yeah. one of that. No, that's true, although... The feathered dinosaur IP could, is waiting to be exploited, You could Chris. more easily than ever now. Oh, yeah. Just with where CG is, you can do whatever you want, really. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Nick is not, you're not. Yeah, where do you fall on this? Nick, man, my gut get... reaction to this was, <laughs> fuck the feathers. I, I, science is great, but damn it, I, I don't know. But, 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 I will go back on it. And I, I agree with Jake. That's right. <laughs> no, I, no, I mean, you know, I actually, I, I thought. We can make you feel like a kid I, again with our new feathered dinosaur movie. I, I thought by Jurassic Park 3, actually. I remember before Jurassic Park 3 came out, I was like, they should just do the feathers now. They should probably just do it. But they didn't do it. And, uh, you I know. know. They what had was... it. They had it. Imagine if Jurassic Park 3. <laughs> Let's get into the Jurassic Park for a second here. Yeah, of course. Jurassic Park 3, which brings Dr. Segment. Alan Grant back, who was like a bird. They were evolved yeah. from birds before it was cool. Yeah. What if, like, fuck it, life finds a way. This is the dinosaur that has no frog DNA in it, and it's right. feathered, and then he would just, like, cry himself <laughs> dead, basically. <laughs> yeah. That's they missed the missed opportunity. Yeah, to make him cry. Again. What was the yeah. what was the setup for Jurassic Park three? Like why are oh, there it's dinosaurs real dumb. on that one? Okay. Oh, why are dinosaurs on that one? Because it's the same island from the Lost World, which okay. was the backup island that, okay. they, that they made. Well, what's the dumb part then? Uh, the dumb. Okay. <laughs> well, we got to well, get in and out of this real quick. Yeah. Okay. But okay. That's fine. Basically, Just do it as fast as you can. Some buddy. buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, worse. Jurassic Park 3 a kid uh, is like parasailing uh, with his like stepdad <laughs> well done <laughs> on like a there's a there's a there's like a an extreme sports <laughs> tour that will take you to the outside like the edge of one of the Jurassic Park islands and you can fucking parasail on a rope from a speedboat over it to like maybe see a dinosaur uh-huh. uh, but then the rope Breaks. Okay, of course it does. And yeah, then yeah. Alan Grant gets hoodwinked by William H Macy and uh, and his wife. He's playing a character. It's not. He's not playing himself. Uh, who, who, okay, cla- I, I, who claim to be eccentric <clears throat> millionaires who are going to fund his dig like John Hammond does? Mm-hmm. Then it's revealed that they're actually just kind of like some middle class schmoes who have hoodwinked Alan Grant into going on a rescue mission mm-hmm. with them to save their son. And they're like, right. 
they have no money to pay him and they just get trapped on the island and so, then Jurassic Park happens. It's, so, so not that this matters, but fictionally you can understand why those aren't feather dinosaurs because they're actually the same dinosaurs. Well, they've been living right? there for well, a decade breeding on their own and it's also the second site and all this other garbage. Yeah. They oh, did do and a rev I'll, though. They did do a rev on the raptor design though. Yeah. They, 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 they gave them colors which was, was that was a scientific uh, discovery yeah. post Jurassic Park original Jurassic they Park. They also do they, some, some bad things where they introduce new other species of dinosaurs that may yeah. have either been I, I think it was species of dinosaurs that just weren't that were real but were not known about and were really badly designed for the movie and looked like a bad video game enemy yeah. but it was paving the way for Jurassic World which is the public's already bored of dinosaurs, so we should genetically engineer new dinosaur right, species, right, 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 which yeah. are way more sick. Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah, let's not see. talk about Jurassic World until Jurassic World 2 comes out, and then the seal is broken, oh, yeah. and we'll have an all Jurassic World Jurassic s- Galaxy special. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Super Jurassic Galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you guys you guys know about the original Jurassic Park, or Jurassic World script, right? No. Yeah, the militarized robot dino- or dinosaurs with like, guns on their back and oh, stuff. Yeah. What? No. Oh, yeah. The pitch for that was Jurassic Galaxy via Steven Spielberg's mind. That that was what really? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, you could see remnants <laughs> of it in the in the in the actual version of Jurassic World that was released, where Chris Pratt's character is like training a team of raptors, and uh-huh. that's the conceit. Oh, right, right. Uh, the original script was he's tra- he trains a team of raptors to be like a commando squad that ha- are wearing like <laughs> robot suits, and they can talk. This just like sounds like one of those stupid books on the internet that people write and publish yeah, no, on it's Amazon. Not, well, and for and many years, people were like, that can't possibly, this, this leak can't possibly be real. This sounds like fan fiction. Uh, uh, it, was, it was real. Yeah. Anyway. Self-publishers will find a way. Right. So, I mean, it really, hopefully it they'll literally get some just of those sounds ideas like fucking Air too. Force yeah. oh. Dino Man or whatever. <laughs> God, those <laughs> stupid... Oh, I had those action figures. I'm, yeah. I'm, no, I did. I'm, I had the stupid I'm action so sad about this conversation. Fucking... I swore to myself that I would not talk about Jurassic World <laughs> you did it. on this podcast. <laughs> this and, was the thing that took off. Not the, not the spaghetti. Live with it. <laughs> <laughs> spaghetti. Oh, I don't care yeah. about that. Yeah. Oh, it's just... <laughs> there's just nothing to say. There's nothing to say. I just think you've been proven wrong. All right, you guys want to take a break? Let's take that break. We need to. <laughs> People in chat are suggesting that the new hook for Idle Thumbs is just Jurassic Park instead of video games. <laughs> it's like it's a Jurassic Park podcast, but it's like really the it's like a smart Jurassic Park <laughs> it's like podcast. They say clever. <laughs> <laughs> what of them worked on a Jurassic Park video game? So they they're experts. They really, oh they're my god, really I know. did! I did for like three minutes. The authentic. Authentic uh, Jurassic Park show. God, I forgot that I worked on that Jurassic Park game. <laughs> yeah, I worked on Jurassic Park the video game. <laughs> <laughs> Did it have a subtitle or anything? Uh, the game. Oh, the game. Okay, yeah. So yeah. If you think, of, if you imagine for yourself the logo from Jurassic Park, the ride, but imagine it says <laughs> game. <laughs> This episode of Idle Thumbs is brought to you by Blue Apron. Blue Apron sends everything you need to make your own home-cooked meals right to your door. You get the recipes, you get all the ingredients, they come in a refrigerated box, um, just all right in front of your face. And you take wow. it out of the box, you put it in your fridge, and then you make What's at your feet? the meal. Well, you, you, know, you bring it to your face. You bring it to your face. You raise it to your face and yeah. slam it in there, and it's delicious. Uh, just a few days ago, I made what I think is my absolute all-time favorite Blue Apron meal to date. Whoa. Yes, it was Indonesian spiced salmon <laughs> with frike, yet another like new grain I've been introduced mm. to by, by Blue Apron. Uh, this salmon was delicious. The spice blend was unbelievable. It is definitely one of the ones that I have set aside to make myself additionally in the future. It was so good. If you go to blueapron.com slash idle, you can get your first three meals free. That is blueapron.com slash idle. First three meals free with free shipping. Um, You can't go wrong. Why would you not take them up on that? You get the meals to your house. They're delicious. Uh, they are varied. All kinds of different ingredients and cuisines. Yeah, (laughs) They're varied. Varied, you say? They claim here that uh, Blue Apron families cook nearly three times more often. So I don't know. So I you believe cook that three meals a week. That means <laughs> people just aren't. Yeah, okay. it means you were basically you're cooking yeah. lunch for la- later in the week over the weekend. You're going crazy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. 
Uh, so yeah, blueapron.com slash idle. Get your three meals, free shipping. This episode of Idle Thumbs is also brought to you by Casper. Casper manufactures and mails to you mattresses, pillows. I mean, mainly the mattress, but all the other stuff, all the other accoutrement you need mm. to put a whole great nights of s- sleep together underneath you. Wow. Yeah. Uh-huh. And above you and sort of around you. And all you. around you and mm. sort of enveloping you in a pleasing way. Mm-hmm. Um, if you go to casper.com slash thumbs mm. and use the code thumbs Whoa. at checkout, you will get $50 <laughs> towards the purchase of any mattress. Hmm. Here's the thing. You can try the mattress. Try Casper for 100 nights risk-free nice. in your own home. If you're not into it, they will take it right back for you. Nick Brecken, how many nights are you into your your new Casper that you that you bought? Oh man, a while ago? I want an exact number. Yeah, <laughs> probably <laughs> close to hundred. Imagine you're in a CIA interrogation. Probably okay. close to hundred. How close imagine. are you to sending that thing back? Oh, so far away from that. Yeah, it's not even a consideration. Yeah, yeah, no, that's yeah. that's that's standard. You could. I could though. I have the but option, not, which gives me peace gonna. of mind. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um <laughs> take it from Nick Brecken. It'll fix your back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't take fix, it. Don't fix take my it back. I mean, don't take his. Yeah, don't take get, mine. Get your own. Yeah. Um, Casper, get your own. Get your own. <laughs> get your own. <laughs> this was for me, not for you. <laughs> Casper, <laughs> Casper. An inferior slogan. <laughs> for me, not for you. This, this one. This one's for me. <laughs> Mario. This Casper is for me. It isn't yours. <laughs> right. Casper.com slash thumbs and the offer code thumbs for $50 towards any mattress for you. Thanks, Casper. Hey, Nick. Hmm. Um, someone's mentioning some sort of crotch shot in Dark Souls. What? What? I said, I hope Nick describes the crotch shot in Dark Souls 2. God, I don't know what that is. <laughs> okay. I really don't remember what that, what that would be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the crotch shot. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, I can imagine, but I don't. <laughs> the ending, Nick. The ending. <laughs> oh! Oh, well, that's it's not... That's fine. I can describe it now before the podcast. Begins. You know, Nick. Shut up, Nick. He knows. <laughs> Jesus, I don't know. <laughs> the one... I know... I think I know what they're talking about because I watched a clip of it just of the guy sitting in the chair. It's the very end of the... It's yeah. the ending yeah, of the game. Right, that's what they mean, right? Yeah, yeah but I, I assume, put on yeah. just like... A skirt Some or something? set or something without really understanding that oh. that, you would, that, <laughs> that, that the my guy was going to get on through. his throne and that the camera was going to be low enough so that the very last shot in Dark Souls <laughs> it's 2 is like your guy just your sitting skirt, down. Basically. It's just, right. Yeah. It's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> games. Yeah. Games indeed. All right. Welcome back oh, we're to back? the podcast. We're on the clock. I guess we we're are. We're on the clock. We are on the clock. Yeah. So, um, in robot news, okay, let's do it. We don't have to. I Jake seems robot. very. No, no, no. I think I know where this is. I think I know where, what, what robot news where you're going to bring up here. I think you do. Um, researchers, as they as they do, have made a questionable decision regarding robotics. Um, they have created what is essentially um, a sort of cyborg m- <laughs> moth driver thing what they've done well, is, the, the moth is not a cyborg no but the but it's sort of so a cyborg though is like an organic creature that is basically well, fused that's true. with machinery yes right effectively that's basically a cyborg yes. I, I don't know that's probably Half not man. i can't wait for all the fucking cyborg researchers to email me next week and explain yeah why i'm an idiot but uh yeah, half man, half moth. Yes. Uh, <laughs> no, <this. laughs> uh, you're referring, That's, of course, to the Mothman. Moth yeah, problem. Mothman, yeah. Oh, really? Is that what that is? No, 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 no. I don't know what that, that is. No, that's, not, that's not what that is. Yeah, that's a okay. movie that's in the video store that's that you see forever. That's not what it's about. See forever. It's not about a half man, half moth that's also a robot cyborg news. No, this is about a plain old cyborg moth. Uh, this is a moth that is, like, <clears> effectively <throat> harnessed into a an adorable tiny little car. That it drives around mm. and it controls the car. It's like a what a five inch tall, little tiny car. It's or got, something. yeah, it's got a little trackball on yeah, it. Yeah, the so steering when the- mechanism for the car is like a sphere that it uses like a computer trackball mm. to drive it around, mm. and it's it's sort of like tethered in so that it can't fly. It can't like leave the car. It's like. St- 
fused into the driver's seat, basically. So all it can do is like walk on the trackball. And as it walks on the trackball, depending on what direction it tries to walk in, that turns the steering of the car. So the moth thinks that it's moving, but it's really controlling a robot that has like smell holes so that it can smell where it's going. Yeah. So the idea is whatever its destination is, they put a like pheromone coated, what, you know, beacon at its destination and the moth smells it and is like, I just want to smell this thing. And it (laughs) steers towards it. It looks really cute when it's steering the thing around too. It looks really good. It's sort of flopping around. It's kind of, it looks like it's smiling. Yeah. 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 It's real bad. Yeah. It's terrible. Um, And apparently it is almost as like 20% worse than a regular moth or some number like that. Right. Not not bad, but pretty good. And I'm sure they're going to improve it. Um, Like (laughs) a a regular moth can walk to the smell like 20% better than <laughs> yeah. than this thing can like drive to So it. this is actually nowhere near the first experiment like this. Okay. Um in 2004 I I've I was not aware of such experiments. Trackball based insect robotics <laughs> is a thing that I have followed apparently. Yeah. Uh, in 2004 there was a very similar experiment done with cockroaches which is way grosser. Man this is a slow moving science, huh? Ha, 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 like like the bugs <laughs> that are controlling the cars. Oh. <laughs> <Jake>. uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, they, there was a like the exact same. This is like a the exact same t- <laughs> thing. I'm sorry, if I feel weird about talking about this. I no, no, okay. No. I will talk about three notable cockroach-based movement experiments. <laughs> okay. You came way more prepared wow. for this than I expected. Wow. <laughs> One of them is the sound effects from a Super Mario Brothers Kraft macaroni and cheese commercial. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, the, almost the same test was done, but it was using the vision of a cockroach instead of the smell. It was done like. Like where it, it would just like look and they would try it would because cockroaches. Oh, okay. I was just imagining like, like Terminator vision. Yeah, with yeah. A cockroach. Like vision. No, no, no. Yeah. It would just it was driving around on a trackball the same uh-huh. way and uh, it was it used. I remember I read that they the type of cockroach they use is a hissing cockroach, which is fucking <laughs> gross. Like mm. it's like it's like, ominous. like a it's a big ass cockroach, like a big ass mm-hmm. co- gross. And it drove a little car. Co- it rode around on a trackball, and then the the thing that they use the hissing cockroach because when those cockroaches get annoyed or tired, they go. <laughs> So they was so the people doing the experiment would be like, oh, you're all tuckered out, and then they put a new cockroach in the car. <laughs> wow! But it was the it, it was the same idea where they were like, can, yeah. can we put it on a trackball so it thinks that it's moving, but what it's actually doing is controlling a robot. I mean, it's still moving, but not it, for the it reason thinks that it's thinks moving it is. itself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was another one of these that was done uh, in the late '90s. That was an experiment um, actually intending to help. Um, this is a this is the way more like Cronenbergian one. I think right. this is like. Um, the intent was can like muscle impulses be used to control a motorized vehicle which was like can mm. people who have very limited mobility uh, or, or like are completely disabled but can sort of tense their muscles up a little bit move things around like well the obvious way to test this is to build a weird like nightmarish David Cronenberg <laughs> Tim Burton bug car where a cockroach <laughs> drives a tiny wheelchair around so that happened and apparently worked really well <laughs> wow uh, okay it, are we do we use that now for, for no i mean people? well i don't know the cockroach in that test could not um it didn't have a lot of control over it. It was like when the co- <laughs> this is whole, this oh, why it's like, when the cockroach tried to fly, the wheelchair just drove forward. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the most <laughs> fucked up one of these is the- it would give them a little plane. So these are all like ha 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 <laughs> robot news hilarious. There's going to be robots that are driven by uh, or there's going to be cars driven by robots. It's just it's like right. maybe. Uh, like the uh, the moth one, they said it was going to be used for like drug sniffing. Uber. Right. It's gonna- <laughs> 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 oh God. my! Sounds like my phone's vibrating yeah. because the Uber's here. <laughs> no, that's just a fucking bug buzzing. Yeah. yeah. God, the car drives up and <laughs> can you? <laughs> the the dashboard just has a little bubble on it, like a little glass <laughs> bubble with a little moth. Going, yeah, oh, is la, that la, the la, sensor? La, la. Is that yeah, like yeah. the the auto driving sort of sensor? <laughs> three hundred sixty degree cameras. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. tired. It's okay. tired. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you have to. Open the glove compartment and put the new hissing cockroach in. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. You, meanwhile, you're in the phone in the back of the car. Yeah, I don't know. My Uber driver's being a real asshole. It seems like he's really tired or disturbed. I think that's the sound name. I make. rate this cockroach three stars. No, the really fucked up one of these is the opposite of this, which is, can we put a little metal thing on top of a cockroach um, and then plug things into it? And then put uh, slight electric currents in it that will just make it think that what it wants to do is turn left or right. And that also totally exists. So the cockroach is not driving anything. 
This is a person. So who, what's even the point? It's the cockroach. <laughs> this is like literally. Can we just can we remote control an insect to go where we want by strapping a little thing to its and head? And then can you have it drive a car? Yeah. So that by controlling yeah. the cockroach. Yes. Put it on the put it on the, the track wheel. This Uber has been then, hacked. Yeah. It's being driven by a human. Cuts to cockroach on trackball that then has circuitry grafted to its head right. that is then just po- hooked up to some guy's steering wheel controller. Right. <laughs> hooked up to a guy in VR with a trackball underneath him. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing interp- a video game. We've, inter- to, we've, like, we've moth- interpreted yeah. this man's trackball yeah. sig- signals to the point that we can feed different signals into the brain of a cockroach, who will then <laughs> manipulate. The man its is in own fact being ball. driven by three cockroaches <laughs> <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a trench coat. Anyway, this yeah. is they call this the gig economy. I think. <laughs> what this is? This is the gig economy. Uh, it's the sharing economy. Yeah. You yeah. Share your vehicle with bug, with, bugs, with bug brains. You know. Um, yeah, I was really glad when you mentioned that moth video because I immediately was like, "Oh, all that cockroach shit." It's <laughs> well, totally relevant. I'm, yeah. Well, I mean, you guys have seen the maps, sure, the maps, surely, right? That show like most common job in each state in the mm. United States of America, and like, and then it's most like most of them, and then you see truck drivers. Yes, yeah. most jobs in America are uh, or other not, other not most deli- jobs. It's like it's the number one. It, yeah, job it's not is most jobs. Driving and the delivery, height, right? It's yeah. the single yeah. highest. It's job the largest slice of the state. pie in most states. And then if you look at the um, the graphs of the of the uh, world that say what is the most biomass by volume, bugs. It's bugs. <laughs> so I feel like we are definitely going to get. So, yeah, I mean, who's. What's they're going to automate the shit out of our jobs. A cockroach or some, or or some, some guy. guy in a trucker's union. Yeah. Yeah. First, a robot in a factory powered by moths and cockroaches will build moth and cockroach controllers for cars. Then they're mm-hmm. going to install those into the um, car. But they're going to have to pass the. This is the problem with this, though. Is cockroaches don't really know how to drive. So you're gonna have to. Like, oh, well, have to oh, that's smell, the problem. You have to deposit sm- yeah. delicious smells. Oh, I thought you were gonna have to. Location. I thought cockroaches oh. were gonna have to learn like the knowledge, like an old London oh. cab driver. <laughs> right. So oh, yeah. they'll have to know every yeah. every back road and cross street our, in San Francisco. I mean, really, what's gonna happen is our cities are just gonna become really, really smelly. Uh, they're just gonna have like um, smell routes that will be deposit. Like the car will like shoot. Mm-hmm. Smells it's out. It's gonna get Each really fucked up when the bug, smell, right? when the bug H3 responsible yeah. for deploying and uh, retracting that smell smells its own smell and then just turns it on. <laughs> right. We're also just describing the Flintstones here. Let's be honest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's true. This is yes. literally just this the Flintstones. This is the way grosser, <laughs> stranger. It's weird that the Flintstones is our future yeah. in the f- most fucked That's up That's not weird at all. Yeah. Let's be honest here. That's true. Well, the question That's is, true. how do you work toxoplasmosis into this where you, you program the cockroach... <laughs> Via that virus, and uh, yeah, sure. Well, yeah. when the cats get involved, and then all of the cars well, just yeah, drive once, cat foods well, to cats. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, they all they all stop caring about whatever like bug smells they love, and they all just go to the nearest litter box. Mm. As your your Uber just crashes through some guy's wall. <laughs> uh, anyway, courtesy this future, courtesy of science. Yep, I actually learned about this from Science Magazine. Yeah, so. <laughs> Get ready. Get ready for a weird, weird world. Maybe eventually the 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 insects that create the insects that create the robots that create the cars for the insects to drive will just start making robot insects. Like they'll just to, make okay. little cut like, out the middleman. That'll like, be that, they, that's, they'd that, be that'll really mad. What a ruinous economy that would make. Oh, they would <laughs> just become cut out. they would just become like that's like a weird person problem with like we yeah. we made insects we made robot insects to replace uh, regular insects. Yeah. We put the insects out of a job, but yeah. these insects were then built uh, on the legacy system of having to follow smells around. So they have to then automate the smell emitters. Right. Eventually, mm-hmm. then someone then they're going to be fucking pissed when the smell emitting insects are put out of a job to control the robots. When people are finally like, "Look, we've made the cars not need uh, like a <laughs> the insects. The robot insects <laughs> that drive the cars don't ma- need smells anymore. We've managed. <laughs> you're never going to believe this, but we've made a car which does not have to rely on." <laughs> On a on a pheromone smelling insect to operate it. I know, I know that Look, seems crazy. Everyone, but within well, several years, we're pretty sure everyone was really upset when the smell scenting robot insects took over the smell scenting insect drivers. But there was still like those guys all got jobs in the like smell mm. pumping uh, area. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. But then once those insects wait, so in you're the... saying they're like pooping out the smells? No, they're being... just running the machines. Okay. That, that, okay. That the yeah. regular insects that are driving the cars can smell. Right. But now they've invented a an odorless insect driver and that's now everyone's truly out of a job once that happens <laughs> yeah. once the right, once the insect driving the car 
the insect will still drive the car. That's how cars work, as far as insects understand. So it's it's just the 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 workforce supporting the odor production. That's gone. That's the last thing to fall. That's what's gone. It's like yeah. when um, all the toll plazas on um, Bay Area bridges went 100 percent fast track. They're like all the toll collectors. They can have dry jobs driving a bus, but those buses are clearly going to be driven by a robot next decade. Uh, uh, right. Those can be driven by a weird smelly bug <laughs> driver. <laughs> right. Yeah. Which is then the next phase that'll eventually that'll get phased out right, too. Right. Mm. Yeah. It's a bleak future, you guys. Yeah, it's real bad. It sounds like, though, someone's going to stay employed for at least a little longer than we might have thought, like bugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's really just determining what do what is, like, the end stage race. Like, what do they look like? You well, know, like, yeah, do, are they robotic I mean, cockroaches the or are they robotic people or are they robotic cats? We've, we don't know. We've already, but you can go down the logic chain the and find out. I know from when I was a kid, I learned that cockroaches are going to be the ones that outlast everything. And mm, now we know true. why. That's true. It's because they're going to be at the top of the food chain in the gig economy. In, in, yeah, driving the cars. <laughs> they're going to be the last people left who are actually making any money off of this I shit. I like that you've already normalized them to the point that they're people. <laughs> I mean, cockroaches, they're going to be the last people left holding up the thing. Who am I? Chris, let's... I mean... I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, shall we do some reader mail? I guess, yeah. Why not? <laughs> sorry, everyone. No, don't, no, no, never apologize. Oh, we have yet another correction from... Uh, <laughs> it may in fact be... A, oh, sorry, there have been all these facts that we've been <laughs> putting into this ep- these yeah. podcast lately. It's just all facts. <laughs> I think that is uh, being disproven <laughs> rapidly, um, <laughs> that that's what any of those things were. I didn't know that we had any facts in this show and then uh, until it was revealed that they were wrong. Yeah, then we found out you were right. Um, Peter W. writes, in regard to your discussion of the K-5 night scope crime-fighting robot in episode... I guess it's like crime Oh, is this an or versus XOR robot. situation? Yeah, in, okay. a, in episode 298, Jake mentions that you could trick the K-5 if you're a known criminal by also making heavy breathing noises near it. The yes. idea being you could trick the robot's known uh, sort of trigger of known criminals or abnormal noise and temperature yes. changes. Uh, Boolean criteria to not alert the police of criminal activity if you yourself were a criminal. This would work... If it were an XOR, exclusive OR operation in which only one condition can be true, but not both. Yep. But a regular Boolean OR would mean one or both operations must be satisfied for the conditional to be true. Yeah. A minor nitpick, but for any criminals out there walking around with a boom box and dozens of icy hot packs <laughs> taped to their body, hoping to trick the K5, <laughs> they'll be out of luck. Regards, Peter W. Have you guys ever used icy hot? Do you no. know if it's cold or if it's hot? I, I've never used no. it. No, no idea. I do hmm. know now, though, that if you want to get past one of those robots uh, with your boombox slash Izzy Hot combo, first you have to get a copy of their firmware and modify that one or to be an XOR, and then you can that's totally right. fake it out. Exactly, yeah. It's one, one Sounds like a roundabout way, change. but I, I'm telling you, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got to get that XOR in there. Ignoring uh, any other... Th- that's the only thing you should change in the firmware, though. Anything else <laughs> would violate the EULA. <laughs> Uh, why w- and, and that one wouldn't because because uh, uh, there's an XOR on top of that this in the <laughs> <laughs> of some kind. Yeah. Um, all right. Antonio uh, Kazdozian says, "Hey, thumbs. I've been trying to get into a hobby. Um, I love playing video games, but I don't think that counts as one. My question is, what are your hobbies? Thanks for the great podcasts, Antonio. Oh, Podcasting. No. <laughs> I mean, I guess that is God a my, legitimate answer. My honestly, my hobby in the last few months." has probably been building this room. Yeah. Mm, interesting. That's, yeah, I mean, that's yeah, that's true. I mean, you've done a good job with it. The, he means the, the studio we record this podcast in, which yeah. is, if, you, if you're just listening to the audio version of the podcast, it is resplendent. It's not done. It's, it's not, not quite done, done but it is, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, putting up all the walls and all the camera setups and getting the broadcast stuff set up. Like, I've, like... That's why it's a good hobby. It'll never, it'll never be over. You know, well, it does, never, that is a classic <laughs> hobby, though, right? Like, yeah, you've no. got your car on cinder blocks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I, this, I mean, is, this is that. This is that. Or, like, take it with it forever. The model train set that always has, like, three things unpainted or, like, whatever right. the hell mm-hmm. else. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, no, this is that entirely. Where I'm, just, I'm looking at this gonna, now and I'm like... I just got to put in a good weekend and that baby will be red. Oh, well, right now I'm like, got those seams in the foam. But like the big ticket buy is when I upgrade the camera system. But yeah. that, I, that's like, I can never afford that. You guys would never... <laughs> right, right, right. But you, but you re- frequently regale your acquaintances. Yeah, like, the, the, the yeah, ball yeah, and chain yeah. over here, Chris yeah, and Nick yeah, would yeah. never let me uh, go for that, you know. This baby's really going to sing once I get those... <laughs> that new... That new... 1080p... That HDI-based... Uh, <laughs> Multicam broadcast rig. Oh, this kitten's going to purr, let me tell you. 
Yeah, so this stupid orange room full of garbage paintings that are actually beautiful. God, thank you everyone who made these stupid paintings no, that really I called cool. stupid just now, but they're great. Um, they you also called them orange, which is inaccurate. No, the orange room was stupid paintings. Mm. Orange room. <laughs> stupid orange room. Um, I don't know. My, my hobbies used to include hiking and doing all sorts of outdoor things. Doesn't anymore. Used to include... Um, I don't know what else it used to include. Nothing. I don't do anything. <laughs> Fuck. I don't have any hobbies anymore. Yeah. My, my hobby is to be tired. I mean, I, I guess kind of sadly, recently, my hobby is almost identical to yours, Jake, but for a slightly different facet of Idle Thumbs, which is I've been fucking with the website based on your some redesign ideas you had. So if you go to Idle Thumbs, to, if you go to Idle Thumbs dot net, you can see our slightly different homepage now, which yeah. actually lists all the podcasts we, we have instead stupid. of not. At least you and I, Chris, have stupid, stupid hobbies because what our hobby used to be was making fake websites that presented as actual journalistic outlets and then filling them with content until we were employed. That's true. Mm. That was our. That's <laughs> what Idle Thumbs was originally. Yes, that's yes. our job. Yeah. Uh, our hobby. Uh, now it's our job. Oh God. Uh. <laughs> Do you have any hobbies, Nick? Nick streams Dark Souls. Uh, yeah, that's that's uh, <laughs> really what I do. Anyway, these point. diverse opinions uh, are always well, cooking. Does cooking no, I will say, yeah, does I was actually going to say that, that, is, that, is, the, that is the thing well. that I if I, when I am when I have a four hour block of time and I and I want yeah. to uh, engage my brain in a way that is that is universally positive and good, uh, I I cook something elaborate. For me, it's been cooking and also like. Um, sort of bartending stuff, I guess, yeah. which I kind of got into in part because of Jake, I think. I can't remember how exactly <laughs> that happened. Maybe maybe I'm making that up in part in my head. But I've definitely, both I with think both they, you guys, I've yeah. talked about, like we've all talked about like cocktails and, and bartending mm -hmm. a pretty fair amount. Um, I, I, got, I mean, as people who followed our streams would know, uh, I got really into tiki drinks, tiki cocktails um, last year and... Uh, St I, you know, still like, I don't know, every other week or so, I'll make a new tiki drink that I haven't made before just at home for just me and Sarah. Tiki drinks are a really good inroad into cocktails if you want to start yeah. making. Yeah. If you if you want a hobby that also gives you a lot of alcohol, right. um, <laughs> tiki drinks are a good, like, the drinks are really fun to make. They taste not super alcoholic. Like, I mean, they at least can. I they mean, can, but yeah, like, it depends the, on the, drink. the, like, you can make them to get yourself into it that are just kind of like, fun fruit mm -hmm. drinks that yeah, also yeah, yeah. have rum in them. Yep. Um, and then the deeper you get into hilarious. it, the more you kind of like can sort of branch out into more interesting or unusual flavors. And Yeah, and then like you start wearing like a really like clean white fedora <laughs> <laughs> and like, you know, you get like a Hawaiian shirt that's unbuttoned with like a uh, just like a uh, tank top underneath and... Um, you're really cooking. You get some like Ray Bans, mm -hmm. maybe. You get some... like Jake's hair. Uh, style. Oh well, then you're just the Smuggler's <laughs> Cove bartender. You don't yeah. need that though. You That's could true. also yeah. have like really long hair and a ponytail. <laughs> That's true. There's all kinds of options. Yeah. I mean, or you could just you know, really <laughs> just just greased up, uh, like sort of rockabilly look to mm -hmm. go with that attire. That's true. Yeah. But yeah, you know, yeah. any of these things happen if you make too many tiki drinks. Right. It sort of creeps into your life. Speaking of that guy, because you guys both clearly know who this is, the yeah. the guy who's always, so we in San Francisco we have we are fortunate. I think that actually this is the reason I got into tiki drinks is because um, right around the time I was moving back to San Francisco from Boston, where I lived for just a couple years, um, uh, when I came back to San Francisco, recently a bar called Smuggler's Cove had opened up, um, and I ended up living like a, in with, that bar. with Nick a few blocks away from it. Yeah, um, and it is widely recognized as one of the best tiki bars in the world. And I think as a result of that was one of the reasons I got really into tiki drinks. And the the bartender who's always on the ground floor bar mm -hmm. of of, uh, of Smuggler's Cove was recently named Bartender of the Year by Imbibe Magazine. Yep. Well, crazy. He's pretty cool, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that guy's great. Um, anyway, so that that's a hobby uh, that I guess I, I have in that. We, some Cooking sort of food share. and making drinks. Yeah. I mean, I guess a thing that is a hobby, sort of, I mean, it's related to podcasting because it includes one. Um, my wife and I sort of care, are, have been carrying on the Idol Book Club, which uh, which I did with Sean, you know, a couple of years ago. And uh, it's just a way for us to sort of talk about literature together each month in a sort of structured format because – you know, with I think without prodding, I would let myself just fall way behind on actually reading fiction, which is a thing that I love. But it's hard for me to like self motivate as an adult with um, 
you know, all the things an, an adult has to do in your life and also because I'm garbage. Um, that's That's been a hobby, I guess, of mine over the yeah. last year. So we've got really generally applicable hobbies. I mean, the cooking, <laughs> yeah, the cooking, and are. cooking and drinking a lot of alcohol. Those are anyone can do that. Anyone can do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, the book club thing, anyone can do also. I mean, you can start a book club. That's true. You know, with with anyone, a friend, whatever. I should really join a book club that isn't yours. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to read one of those. I don't want to read Wuthering Heights uh, again, Chris. Yeah. I decided that I, I don't. I had want never to. read it before. I'm reading it for the book club for my first time, and it is a weird book. It is a crazy book. Everyone in it. You know what was impenetrable? Reading that other. book when I was 15. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. That was real hard. It's 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 a it's a great book, but it is strange and nothing like what I expected. And if you suspect that Wuthering Heights is, I, it's interesting reading it because it so often gets sort of tarred by shitty people with like, oh, it was written by one of the Brontes. It's like a romance for girls or no, something. No, it's a like fucking weird thing. thing. It is a weird fucking. Not that there's anything wrong with that genre at all, but like people tend to be very. Um, derisive sh- yeah. in shitty ways but unrelated to the quality of of romantic novels um this book is not one <laughs> i found it very hard to follow and very overbearing like emotionally on me because of just how oh it's intense fucking dour mm-hmm. everything is it's crazy <laughs> yeah. brian wallace says i'm the owner of nick brecken's mom dot if you want me to give you rain over this blog Please respond with an email address for me to send ownership to. I picked it up to make sure that you would get it, but I forgot that I had it until you, <laughs> it, until Nick Brecken cool came up. Signed Susan Brecken. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Okay, well, it's worth pointing out right now that for a while, uh, Idle Thumbs owned GiantBomb.net. That's true because they didn't have it. Oh. Mm-hmm. We also own Phil.fish. Uh, which I picked up when I noticed that it was available. Mm. Um, That's true. Phil. Fish is just one of our. And I've been I've been URLs. meaning to actually get that to Phil Fish somehow, but I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> it, just goes, it goes to idlethumbs.net, and there are a few forum uh, idlethumbs community members. I think uh, Jen 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 Egatron, I think is a is a frequent proponent of just using Phil. Fish as the standard idlethumbs yeah website uh, access point. So feel free to do that if you like. Um, we don't have giantbomb.net anymore. No, I, we gave that back to them. Yeah, we didn't give it back to them. We just gave it to them. Let's be let's be clear. Uh, no, they oh. owned it for a minute oh. and then uh, oh, and I forgot to day. renew it. I, uh, I think it's day. I I I, uh, I wonder if this is I, it's fine. Whatever, who cares? Um, yeah, no. When they when <laughs> they when they uh, got bought by CBSI, I think CBSI just neglected to mm. maintain that domain name. Huh. And whoops. Uh, I know Vinny was like. He was shocked that it had won, <laughs> that it uh, lapsed, and two, yeah. were the guys who grabbed it and yeah. uh, pointed it at ourselves. He was yeah. really happy about it, actually, because we were good. able to give it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that, that was a good time for a minute there. when giant... like two weeks or so when that was... Oh, no, it was months. Oh, really, was it? Yeah, okay. it was mm-hmm. months. All right. That was the episode that Ryan was on, I think, that we changed whenever he mentioned giantbomb.com to .net inside of the episode and then registered giantbomb.net. Oh, you're right. The name of the episode in which Ryan was on was the called episode giantbomb.net. Was, no, the episode oh, was, was called, called giantbomb.com, giantbomb.com yeah, but we yeah. just he kept yeah. plugging the site and we kept anyway, editing it. Yeah. Man. Weird. Yep. Um, well, uh, Daniel Primo writes, Hi, Thumbs. Um, I was a big fan of bubble tape growing up. Now, this is Are we going to get corrected about bubble tape? We're not going to get corrected okay. about bubble tape. Thank God. That would be hardcore. Uh, yeah. No. This is. I guess just he's. This has nothing to do with anything we talked about. I suppose, except that we talked about bubble tape. Okay. And the aesthetic of bubble tape commercials last week. Okay. Mm. So he says, "I was a big fan of bubble tape growing up until one incident. When I was 15, my family went to Disney World. I was probably rationing my bubble tape. I can see myself folding it over and over and measuring it so I wouldn't run out before we went back home. Uh huh. Um." God, I think two inches per day. I can totally relate to this actually because I had the kind of parents who never would have countenanced the idea of buying me bubble tape. Mm. But I definitely got a bubble tape from some school, like I don't know, Secret Santa or what, you know, some yeah. like equivalent of that one time. And I remember, like that was, it felt like amazing contraband. Mm-hmm. And so I like very carefully rationed out the strip to to consume, right? The just sugary, fruity. It's mass. the gross kind of. F- floppy gum that Im- turns into like a pea sized bite oh, immediately God, immediately there's so much moisture in it yeah, yeah it just it's, all it's squeezes just out gross yeah so anyway he says well that that makes this even grosser he says i would chew on the same piece for a really long time 
Mm. At one point, it was probably it's late afternoon. Rubber band. <laughs> at one point, it was. Pro- it's yeah. At one point, it was probably late afternoon or early evening, and we went into a theater to see Captain EO or whatever was showing in the summer oh, of no. 1995. That definitely would have been Captain EO. Yeah. Um, it's not where you think it's going, but I would be. I would now want to hear what. Where you do you think, think it's going, Nick? Captain EO is like a rumbly kind of, he, sw- he swallowed his bubble tape. He did not swallow oh, his bubble tape. he didn't tape. swallow his bubble tape. It's worse. He says, we sat down and about a minute labor- later, all the bubble tape in my mouth disintegrated. It's hard to explain. Oh, I've had uh, that happen. I've oh, that's the worst. It went it's from terrible. being a continuous mass to something like wet, dry, or lint. Yeah. I had to spit it out into a napkin immediately. Keep up the good work. Daniel Primo, Atlanta. Yeah, when gum breaks down, it's a bit bummer. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it just turns to ash in your mouth. It's a- yeah, yeah. It's like you know, gritty. It's like, yeah. Here, you know what happened? This was the moment where it no longer was for him. It was for them. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was his, but he, yeah. he wasn't a kid yeah. anymore. Was yeah. for him. Bubble tape. <laughs> oh, well, you, when God. you reach a certain <laughs> age, bubble yeah, tape turns you, to ash in your mouth. Yes, yeah. it just, it yeah. all, that's your childhood yeah, just disintegrating <laughs> away to the strains of Captain EO in 3D Jesus. at Disneyland. <laughs> to to, yeah, to the strains of <laughs> I don't, Francis I, Ford Coppola's. Yes, Francis yeah, Ford yeah. Captain Coppola's EO. Captain EO. <laughs> Man. Uh, Nick and I have an, an unspecified like double date coming up to watch the uh, Francis Ford Coppola Dracula, oh, yeah. which I've never seen. Mm-hmm. Sarah showed me the trailer for that the other day, and I'm very excited Yeah, for this That has Tom Waits in it, doesn't it? The trailer? I don't know. No, the movie. Oh, oh, I don't think I, so. Someone did when we were having- Really? Yeah, someone mentioned I, that the other yeah, day. I thought Tom Waits was in it as oh, like fuck. Renfield. I don't anyway. Know. For context, we also recently all watched Dracula 2000 together. And that was I didn't. That was. Uh, it's in the same universe as Blues Brothers 2000 and Death Race. Uh, <laughs> is, Death Death Race is Death Race 2000? Death, is that right? No, it's not 3000. No, it's it's a lot. It's a higher number. Really? There's, uh, there's another. No, fuck. it's not. Death Race. I don't know what number it is. I what, don't know, Chris. What number is Death Race? Um, Can you ask that on the internet? It is 2000. Oh, I think. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. okay. It's it's sorry. I I thought so. They. I mean, they share continuity. Did you know there's a Death Race 2050 coming out this year? Yeah. Nobody I didn't cares. Know that. What? Nobody cares. In the year 2050, the planet has become overpopulated. By death to help race. government control population, the government develops a quote death race. Okay. Annually annual competitors race across the country scoring point. You know what they could fucking do to really make this shit fast and interesting? After like they've already done Death Race 2000, by the time they get to Death Race 2050, they're on what the like the 51st 50th Death Race. <laughs> Have cockroaches drive the cars. <laughs> Just flip it around. Death race, cockroach. You know what movie did have cockroaches derby. driving cars? I don't know. I definitely don't know. Men in Black. The whole freaking movie. <laughs> that that <laughs> oh, fucking guy true. that you were impersonating. That's true. Yeah. Oh, that. Yeah. 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 God, yeah, yeah. no wonder he's so mad. Yeah. His brethren are enslaved, yeah. as our Uber drivers. Or not? Maybe that's where maybe that's where the technology originated. Because you were saying this happened in like the late '90s that they started doing this. Mm-hmm. It's when that man in black alien bug guy showed up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for joining us on Idle Thumbs. We'll be back next week. Uh, you can you can write us at questions at idlethumbs dot net. Um, you can. Find us on Twitter <laughs> at Idle Thumbs. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Idle Thumbs. Uh, this episode and all of our episodes are available as videos at youtube.com slash Idle Videos. And you know what? If you want to find all of those things easily, you can go to the all new, by, by all new, I mean slightly redesigned homepage. Phil.fish. <laughs> at phil.fish. <laughs> P-H-I-L dot F-I-S-H. Chris and I put some work over the weekend into redoing the front page of the Idle Thumbs website. So it now does the things that any real website should do, but ours didn't for five years. But only the front page is new. Yeah, yeah. None of the other pages are different. The front page does amazing things. It lists all of the shows on our network that are active, so you can actually see them all in one place. And it links to our YouTube, and it links to our Twitch. It links to the store? It's always linked to the store. Okay, Got to keep that going. I mean, that's, yeah. that's how it always is. That's true. The store. Buy yeah. a shirt. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty good. So like, forget every other URL you know, fill.fish. Um, that said, you always say twitch.tv slash idle thumbs. People should know that if you really want to watch the streams, idlethumbs.casino is where it's at. <laughs> that's oh, yeah. True. Yes. 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 Alternatively, twitch.tv slash wizard. Mm, mm-hmm. That's true. Also works Our secret for link. reasons we do not understand. Yeah. 
Yeah, and just a reminder, we are going to be live streaming a ton of the games from Wizard Jam 4, the Idle Thumbs Community Game Jam, this Saturday on our Twitch channel at idlethumbs.casino. That's Saturday, ju- July. <laughs> wow. Uh-oh. Saturday, g- January 28th. 28th. Yeah. Probably around noon Pacific yeah, time. Around there sometime. We'll announce time. it on our Twitter feed, which you can get to at idlethumbs.twitter feed. <laughs> True. At twitter.com slash idle thumbs. Mm-hmm. Um, so keep an eye on that on those tweets. I will. Um, but also just show up around noon. There's probably going to be a bunch of garbage of us messing up the feed and breaking everything before we start. So there'll be plenty of time to catch up. That's true. Sounds good. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, thanks for joining us. Um, again, you can send us email at questions at idle thumbs.net about whatever bullshit, I suppose. Um, and we will be back for idle thumbs 300. Oh shit. The future of death Death racing. Yeah. Death race 300. Death race 300. Death race 300. Death race race 300. I can't wish I could do that guy's voice. Oh, the like sugar and water. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Put sugar in. Yeah. It's hard. It's hard. (laughs) More. (laughs) It's hard. It's a fucking hard voice to do. More. It's just because like, it's like a weird southern accent kind of as well as like the like <laughs> Right. Well the part that I always that always sticks out to me is like <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> Bye everyone. Bye.